testimony. The only thing I'd like to expand on that is when it comes to uh, LGBT youth, um, as it stands now, there is no place for homeless youth to go um, when they are kicked out of their houses. And specifically, I, I'm referring to LGBT youth as we, they represent about 40% of the homeless youth out there, when we represent 10% of the population in general. This is a huge disparity. So um, let me paint a picture for you. You are 15 years old, you are keeping a secret, and you are outed by a friend, supposed friend or a family member to your parents, and you are thrown out of your house by those wonderful people that were screaming, let the people vote. You have nowhere else to go. You, there's no shelter for you to go because it's against the law here in the state of, in the Aloha State for a shelter to take you in under the age of 18. The only place left for, left for you to go are the streets. And so therefore you are caught sitting, sleeping on the sidewalks, and you are now have a criminal record. <clears throat> Coming from the HR background, you have now just given that person, a homeless person, that one extra barrier to be able to find a job, to be able to make something of themselves, to make them to have them be able to be a full productive member of society. And that's unfair. Uh, the laws need to be changed to ensure that we can have a homeless use to shelter. Um, the O uh, says there's about 110, 150 homeless youth in the urban core. Not to count the number of homeless youth that, that are couch, couch surfing out there that were lucky enough to find uh, a family member to take them in after being thrown out. So this bill does help that. We do hope you do move forward on it. We would like to see a bill that fixes the law that allows for homeless youth shelters to be able to take care, take, take care of these youth, get them off the streets, and get them back into society. the possessions, and then return the identification and medications to the individual. 
Runaway and homeless youth are afraid of involvement with law enforcement and may not wait while the police complete their inventory. They do not understand that they may be able to reclaim their ID and medications and think that they will be arrested if they do not leave the area immediately. Losing identification makes it difficult to help those youth enroll in school or obtain employment. Losing essential medication for conditions such as diabetes or epilepsy could be life-threatening. Yes. Hawaii Youth Service Network encourages the Hawaii Legislature to address these concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rob Hatch is in support of the Alliance. Chris. Chair Chen Auckland and committee members, thank you for hearing this bill. I'm Chris Cockle representing the Amoa Alliance. People in strong support of this bill. You have our written testimony. I just want to highlight a few things that are in it. Uh, in recent years, uh, Honolulu Mayor Kirk Caldwell and city council members, over the strong objections of former city council member Harimoto, uh, have enacted several ordinances aimed at compassionately disrupting homelessness on Oahu. The most prominent of these ordinances are the recently enacted sit-lie bans, which were originally yeah. implemented in high commerce areas like Waikiki, but have been expanded to commercial properties throughout Oahu, uh, including Woodward and Leeward towns, and most recently on malls bordered by businesses. The city officials have argued that these measures are intended to preserve the legitimate, largely pedestrian use of public space uh, necessary for commercial and recreational conduct. We believe those arguments are false for three reasons. First, the city ordinances amount to an unconstitutional, in our view, criminalization of the homeless. Uh, as many judges and legal experts around the country have repeatedly argued, these laws are selectively enforced against the homeless in the form of unannounced property raids, which constitute an unconstitutional violation of the Fourth Amendment's search and seizure, seizure protections. Following understand, understandings of the term search and seizure that were articulated in the court case United States versus Jacobson in 1984, when law enforcement without notice raid a homeless encampment and usurp and often destroy, as, as was previously stated, houseless people's belongings, including basic government documents and identification, the city is, quite frankly, infringing on homeless people's civil rights. Such of these ordinances and sit lie bans in particular are ineffective, serving neither to increase local economic activity or improve services for the homeless. Instead, these ordinances place significant cost upon local taxpayers. Every raid on a homeless encampment, for example, cost the city and county approximately $15,000, according to Mayor Caldwell himself. And similarly, burdensome expenses are borne by taxpayers by the, shortage, by the storage and destruction of confiscated property and potential arrest, prosecution, and incarceration of violators. Third and finally, the aforementioned city laws do not and cannot incentivize housing unless an adequate supply of shelter space and affordable housing is already available. Yeah. Currently, Hawaii has an adequate supply of neither for the more than 4,700 homeless in Honolulu and another 2,200 on the neighboring islands, totals that likely under-report reality given the understandable reluctance of large numbers of homeless people to participate in government studies. Criminalization will not cure homelessness, only housing will. Uh, we would, we, that said, we encourage you to amend the beginning of page 1, line 9 of the bill, to read obstructing or occupying a public place, thus ensuring that the measure applies to all obstruction violations, including park usage restrictions that prevent Hawaii's most vulnerable people from escaping the very streets to which they and their property have now been banned. We must ask ourselves as a society, as a committee, just as human beings, are poor people in need of a jail cell or a helping hand? We sincerely hope that you choose the latter. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Thank
to be able to assist the office, especially if their uh, medications and IDs are confiscated. For instance, you actually need ID for housing first. Um, so in order to get them the services that they need and deserve proactively and productively, uh, these criminalization laws actually are set back to that. I would like to also state that this was our last resort. As one of the co-authors of this bill, um, we don't really set out to contradict a policy that's already been established. However, we have been here before. We've stated our case. We've pr produced studies of other sit-like districts in the mainland that have proven that these types of laws do not work um, to the city council. There was overwhelming opposition against all of the ordinances that are now law, mm -hmm. uh, as um, former council member of Green Moto testified to and, and was witness to, overwhelming opposition to these criminalization laws. Uh, at one point, the city council chair of the zoning committee actually said in public to the press that those bills, all of five of them that were being heard, would be deferred indefinitely. After a closed door hearing with the mayor, that was retracted, and then the bills were reintroduced. So the democratic process wasn't really heeding, uh, within the city council, wasn't really heeding the true essence of democracy and the, the many, many testifiers that came to plead their case, many of them also houseless persons. So this was our last resort. There needs to be a remedy, there currently isn't. And so this would actually afford them the rights and the freedom to be able to be unburdened from criminalization. Thank you very much. We will call the 808. <clears throat> thank you, Chair and yes. members. Also, thank you for letting me speak the last time when I had I will get you testimony for that. Thank you. As president of Rainbow Family 808, it's hard for me to testify because I've never thrown my child out of the house. And neither one of them ever ran away. I wish sometimes they would, but they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's hard for our family to understand any situations that if even Michael would run away at his uh, advanced age, I would not sleep until I found out where he was and if he was hurting, getting help, and get our family help. And so I have a solution to all this. Instead of arresting the kids out of the street, let's arrest the parents who aren't being and fighting by their responsibility of parenthood. It doesn't just stop at 18, and it doesn't stop at 21. I realize that this bill uh, has brighter ramifications for all of the people, but don't we want this land of Aloha to take our brothers and sisters in? In 1981, when I came, I believed that motto that we were the land of Aloha, but I don't see that today. And so we make a lot of money. We have enough money to build drop-in centers and shelters for our children if we would arrest the parents and make them pay for these things. Don't, you don't have to add any more taxes on to our already burdened taxpayers. We would just make the parents accountable because every time it rains, I think of the kids that go to Yelp, and I know they've got wet socks, mm. they have, and if they get arrested, then they have to have a new backpack and all of this that's in it. And so Rainbow Family goes and we shuttle around and we take over what we can. Well, folks, it's not just Rainbow Family that's responsible for our kids. We're all responsible, but mainly make the parents pay. They need counseling. At the very least. Thank you. We have James Vivian Mateo in strong support. Kara in support. Lottie Kwan in support. Patricia Blair in support. Shannon Rudolph in support. Sherry Pollock in support. Sylvia Pope Young in support. Thank you, Tadia 
Tanya Rice in support, Terry Heed in support, and NASW in support, Sino. Tina Clauser in support, Lynn Andrickle in support, Leslie Kiaha in support, Mike Oloyu in support, oh daddy. <laughs> <laughs> seminary to come back and they'd come out to him and they'd thrown him out. So he came to us and we were able to take him in and we were willing to watch over and help out at that time. And he was able to find some other friends to finally help him out and to keep going. So people are still being thrown out and they still need help. And this measure will help them in one aspect. It won't help everything, but at least help out. And I think we need to criminalize anything that has to do with the youth or adults in this case. So they can get through. Thank you. Amnesty International. Beatrice Cantano. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me here and uh, for being here on Saturday. Um, I won't repeat my testimony and a lot of what my colleagues have said, but um, I want to highlight some points. I think it's very important when we think about why the Senate level, you know, stepping up, you know, to create these bills, uh, was a huge mess in what we were left with from our city last year with the uh, sit by ordinances that were passed, which in theory uh, was supposed to be applied to each, each individual regardless of whether they were homeless or not. Um, however, from a civil rights uh, standpoint, we need to also be realistic and see really uh, the selective enforcement of uh, these bills and the real intention behind it. And we're really seeing it. it's really targeted towards the homeless. Yeah. Um, and so it, it is very unfair. Uh, it's discriminatory uh, when you have uh, an entire system, you know, from judiciary to the law enforcement uh, and those who really are in support and have to enforce these bills. Um, having to have the power and the discretion to figure out who they're going to punish, who are they going to select uh, to, you know, figure out who violated these bills and, and who didn't. Um, and this is what's happening. Um, Amnesty International has been very diligent in working with colleagues in, in Honolulu, but also, um, you know, doing our own work in investigating what's really happening out there in the field. and. Um, we will attach the pictures, but I want to give a testimony of what I have witnessed uh, in the Waikiki district, for example. Uh, and I think pictures speak more than like a thousand words, you know, really, and so you will be having that. But I will tell you the account of what I have encountered uh, in several instances, but specifically in one instance where um, there were two women, uh, senior uh, female women, uh, one was homeless and another one wasn't, but, you know, had any indication that she was homeless. They were sitting about 10 feet apart from each other, from benches. And uh, a Honolulu officer came uh, towards the woman who was homeless uh, and lying in this bench, a public bench, in plain daylight, uh, and uh, gave her a warning and said, you need to move your belongings and get out of here and go into an area where the city let my law is not uh, enforced. And uh, if you don't do that, you may decide it up to a thousand dollars, go to court, have a criminal record, and may agree to jail time. This was a 79 year old woman uh, who didn't even have the strength, you know, to do her whole journey to go to the beach. 
which was something that I think most of us, you know, have the freedom and we really love to enjoy here in Hawaii. Uh, on the same token, the woman that was sitting next to her was not bothered by the police. And so I think we really need to pay attention, you know, to what's really happening. And I think what the bill does is really bringing civil and human rights back to the state of Hawaii with regards to homelessness issues. You have a, an amazing opportunity through policymaking and legislation to really address homelessness you know, from its roots and to really deal with housing issues as a human rights issue. Um, we have to stop criminalizing individuals and uh, you know, I'm really strong support of it. Uh, thank you for the wonderful work you're doing. Thank you. Okay, we have Robert Green. He is also in support. Green and Green. Sam in support. In support. Okay. Karen Murray. Huh. Yes, I'm in support. Yeah. It has no sense of humanity and reeks of oppression of apartheid. Are we heading toward concentration camps? The sin my bill should not have even existed, especially not in Hawaii. And the legislatures passing legislators passing this bill are killing Aloha in the state. And it's an indicator of how colonized we truly are. But listening to the testimony on all the other bills today, it's like we're saying you have to wait ten years on a on a, a, a on um, for housing, you know, on on a list. There's ten thousand people on a list, so you have to wait ten years to go to sleep. You know, it's um, uh, our society is um, not making any sense. It requires people to uh, disappear, and which is impossible for adults as well as youth. So. Um, you know, I know a lot of this has been, uh, the testimony has been focusing on youth, but adults can't disappear as much uh, any more than um, <coughs> any more than youth can, and so and um, so to criminalize something like this in the first place was wrong. So I think that we should be able to vacate it, and hopefully in the future we feel bills. Thank you very much. We have any others? Okay, four others, and then we'll go to our last bill. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
more housing of them. The more you make clear this good community, make a housing first. No, only a housing first. Not only a housing people. Tell you that there's some things you might want to think about because where this bill to pass this 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 august body and get to the governor's desk he's going to be applying a different test so here are some issues just off the top of my head sitting here that i thought about number one is there's this question about the apportionment of power between the state and the counties that's at play here because of the mechanism of vacation that is now being put forward so that needs to be checked out the second is that it may violate the separation of powers between the judiciary and this legislative branch. And when you add that third body, which is now the counties, you can start to understand how it is that we need to figure out how that portion of power needs to be working. Um, there are some specific things, some specific sections in the bill that I looked at as I was sitting there, and one of them is that it talks about being denied access to a homeless facility as one of the things that would need to be need to be proven. There may be a good reason why someone might be denied access. For example, an assault may have been committed, a person may be convicted for the underlying assault, and may not be, be invited to return to that facility. Um, same thing with services or programs. I mean, there may, be, there may be reasons why a person is denied access, so I ask you to consider whether or not that's a crucial part of this bill. And then finally, in section two at the end, it says, this act does not, and I'm leaving out two sections, uh, does not affect proceedings that were begun before its effective yes. date on, on pages 9 and 10. To me, that's an internal inconsistency. Here it is, you're literally trying to create a process that will, that will literally reach back in time and vacate a, a previous conviction. So you need to think about what the appropriate language to be able to accomplish that might be in that section. Anyway, thank you very much you for hearing this bill. You mentioned page 8 and 9. Oh, excuse me. Pa uh, it's 8 and 9 on page number 3, oh, section 2. Line, line 8 and 9. Yeah, lines 8 and 9. Excuse me, lines, uh, it's it's actually uh, 8, 9, and 10. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to work with the um, state folks? 
you know, let's get a practicing lawyer here who's doing this. Let's call legal services. Let's get somebody. You know, I, I hung that, you know, that shingle's put away, you know. I don't do that anymore. The other um, option was to move this out to the Judiciary Committee because they have more of that expertise. Yes, I think that would be good. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, let us go to Senate Bill 1014. Oh.